Cool. So I believe we have uh, Matsi on the line with us now. Matsi, can I ask you to, to join me on stage, please? On there our virtual go. stage, there we go. There we go, <laughs> great to see you, great to see you. So we've uh, also some technical difficulties, we've got Matsi here with us. This, uh, this lady has a, a rap sheet that is uh, far too long for our conference today. Um, but you guys may know her as, uh, as one of the big voices uh, behind Simudisa, which is an entrepreneur advocacy uh, platform in South Africa that's doing some really, really amazing work. She's also the, the, co the founder of uh, Faraha Holdings in, in Africa. Um, and uh, does some really great, great stuff in, through there. And gosh, I can't, I can't mention all the boards with where Matsi sits on. It will take us too long. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a privilege. I know you're in between board meetings today. So thank you very much for being here with us today. It's super special to have you. We've asked Matsi to speak to our, uh, our audience of entrepreneurs and investors about kind of timing wise, why Africa, why this is a good idea. Why is the world spotlighting the continent right now? And why are we the fastest growing venture capital investment market in the world? Uh, some of those questions will all go, go into what Matsi has for us, I believe. Yes, um, Lo, I'm very excited. Thank you very much for the invite. And I think right. it's worth sharing where our story started, Brant. I think you had just started um, outsourcing for like literally <laughs> just moved <laughs> into your, uh, your Woodstock office. So this is many, many moons ago. Yep. And I was also still very much involved in the entrepreneurship uh, development space, which I still am. But, you know, that's when we were growing Simodisa. So uh, it's, it's, it was, it's been amazing seeing your journey grow. And I think I'm happy to speak on um, the topic that I've been asked to speak on because it also reflects on your journey as an entrepreneur. And, you know, a lot of people that are on this platform now and, and, and wanting to participate in the conversation we'll be having. It's important to, to have an honest conversation of as much as why is Africa... Um, why investing in Africa is a good idea. We have to be realistic around why it might be difficult for us to really progress. So I think my, my, my speech will just speak a little bit to that. Brilliant. No, so, so keen to, uh, to, have, to hear what you have to say and great to have you again. I'm going to leave the, the stage over to you. Um, everyone is really excited to have you. Thanks, Matsin. Great. Thank you very much. So, Lo, yes, my topic for today is why investing in Africa is a good idea. Uh, but to answer this question, I will ask another question. Why is investing in Africa still just an idea? And when is it going to be an action plan? Because we speak a lot about we need to invest in our startups. We need to empower our entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are important to growing our economy, but we don't necessarily walk the talk. Um, it's, it's something that's relevant, something that's politically correct. But I think even in South Africa, it's something that... Um, we actually are not doing it. Um, the numbers will tell. Uh, yes, the potential, the Africa potential is growing, but I do feel that everybody seems to have a plan for Africa, but Africa does not seem to have a plan for itself and for everybody else. And um, the, the, we all know that Africa has, you know, 65% of the world's arable land. Um, and yet African countries spend more than $35 billion um, dollars per annum importing food yearly. Um, and if you've traveled our continent, you know, you'll see that it's a beautiful continent. It's full of culture, song, dance, um, diversity, but we have very weak political systems, poor infrastructure, lots of looting, and we're just very slow in getting on with it. Um, you look at how long we've been, um, you know, a continent that has, that's post-colonialism. I think South Africa is one of the youngest countries um, that has gone beyond colonialism, but we still, I mean, the countries that got um, liberation from 1960 onwards, uh, but yet if you had to look at the state of affairs, if you had to look at the state of the quality of life, if you had to look at the Gini coefficients that exist, if you had to look at the infrastructure, it's not something, it's not, it's not a good story to tell. So I think as much as why investing in Africa is a good idea, uh, we have to be aware of where are we right now and how are we going to progress ourselves? Because we also can't shy away from the reality, shy away from the concerns, shy away from the challenges that we have as a continent. Um, and a reflection that I made when I was um, drafting the speech is, I look at, um, you know, when um, I've never in my life ever heard an, any African leader saying, our national strategy is to deploy capital and resources in the East, the Middle East or the West, right? 
There's no one African country that says they have enough money to say part of our growth as a nation is how now do we deploy our resources, our money, our capital into other regions of the world. Um, and it's normally how everybody else feels like, okay, let us deploy X amount of money into Africa. It's not because they see Africa as, you know, a country that is buoyant, a country where, oh, sorry, Africa, a continent where um, it, 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 it's, it's equal opportunity for everybody. It tends to be quite exploitative, right? If you have to look at, um, at, at China, I mean, it's been deploying billions and billions um, of dollars into our continent. Um, it's been deploying billions into our infrastructure. Um, and it's not because they think Africa is such a wonderful place and we have to put money in there. Um, it's because they want to extract our natural resources at a discount and with unfavorable terms. Um, and they would want to then take these resources, um, these natural resources back to China um, to beneficiate it uh, and then sell it back to us as Africans um, at a premium. So that is the reality, right? If we had to look at how um, things have been working, how trade has been working, yes, of course, they've been able to build airports, shipping terminals. I mean, if you go to a lot of our African countries, um, you can see that the, the hospital was built by, by a Chinese firm and even Chinese uh, workers, they might not even utilize um, the, 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 the original people of that country. Um, the airports, the shipping terminals, the roads, the railway networks, um, and they're investing in Africa's infrastructure because things need to move from land to sea so that they can ship them over to China so that then China can beneficiate it and then China can sell it to us at a premium. Um, and it's impossible to beat Chinese prices because you know, they've created a whole system. So that's kind of where we are. And then also, if you had to look at aid, um, Africa is known to be um, a continent of aid, uh, cap in hand, starving children. It's a dark continent. Uh, when people are having conferences, they, the conferences would lean more to around how much money do we have to donate to African countries so that they can, um, you know, they can, they can, they can uh, survive. So I think for me, it's more a function of um, we, we, the system is not right. You know, the system that has been created uh, by history, it's not benefiting us. And if we're talking about investing in ventures in Africa, investing in entrepreneurs, investing in startups, we have to be aware of the system in which we're operating in. And this system is not growing Africa. This system is not growing enterprises. This system is not growing our economic potential. So I think I had to just, as an introduction, bring that to light because we have to provide context. But as they would say, a bur makaplan, um, we need to figure out what is Africa's plan for the rest of the world because they seem to have a plan for all of us. How is Africa going to tap into its economic potential? How is it going to benefit from its own natural resources, including human resources? How is it going to leverage its youthful population? How is it going to invest in its own infrastructure? Because the reality is we have all the resources that everybody's making money out of. So now how do we reverse that cycle? How do we change the system that is not working for us? And how do we ensure that we have a plan for everybody else? We are in a position where we can deploy resources into other countries and also deploy resources into our own people. Um, if you had to look at a country like Kenya, it's very dynamic. Um, you know, the entrepreneurship that, that happens that side of the world has caught, well, Nigeria and, and Kenya, it's caught a lot of uh, global attention. Um, and one people are speaking, uh, and, and people speak, um, speak about that, you know, um, the founders in Kenya, they, you know, it's quite dynamic because these are founders that are coming from other countries, uh, but then they would be able to partner with localized partners. And in that way, they'll be able to attract funding into their ventures. Um, and in essence, I feel that South Africa, the rest of the continent, we have so much potential. Um, and like in any other business venture, you have to design a business plan. So I see how as a continent, uh, we have to see ourselves as a viable business, right? The triple bottom line is important. Um, we have to have business models that are fit for purpose. We have to have a fit for market. Um, we have to have a clear and tangible value proposition. Um, we have to know what problems we are solving for. Um, we have to collaborate more and be more trusting of ourselves 
Um, and we also have to have clear and enabling integrated policy frameworks that do allow for this growth to happen. Um, as I say, Africa definitely needs to have a plan for itself and for everybody else. And I have seen some pocket of changes, you know, countries like Rwanda are quite progressive. Countries like Ghana, I mean, Ghana made a huge statement a few weeks back around how they're no longer going to be exporting their cocoa um, to Switzerland so that Switzerland can make these amazing chocolates that we all love. They're actually going to try beneficiate their own natural resources like, like cocoa. Uh, like cocoa. Um, and yeah, I think I, I have a few minutes. There's so much that I can say about this topic, but um, in closing, I feel that the potential is there, but I think until we see it as less of, um, it's a good idea to invest uh, in Africa, it is the only idea, right? Investing in Africa is the only idea and it has to come from all of us. It has to come from Africa for Africa and because we can't have any more missed opportunities, um, generational missed opportunities. Uh, we can't have any more years of being a continent of aid. Um, how many more years are being referred as a dark continent? If we are not investing in ourselves, why should anybody else invest in us? So investing in Africa needs to go beyond just an idea. It needs to go into action mode. Um, investing in Africa is not just a good idea. It's a best idea. And if it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, then when? Thank you very much. Hey, Lowia, one of the founders of Outsource CFO. If you enjoyed this video, make it official. Click subscribe.